You're my twin brother, but we're nothing alike. Oh, come on, get in the car. We gotta get out of here. First, we gotta fill up the car with gas, and then we have to bug out. Well, yeah, I, I hear you, but um, uh, the electric grid's down, and the gas stations can't pump without electricity. So, you know, we can't go anywhere because we don't have any gas. <sighs> Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and what you're looking at me through right now is a tilt-shift lens. It came up in a discussion earlier with someone that said that they liked the look of tilt-shift lenses or that tilt-shift lens effect. Um, the only real way to get it is with a, a real, actual tilt-shift lens. And what you're looking through now is a real, inexpensive tilt-shift lens. Uh, that's why the image is not as clear as it really uh, otherwise would be with a high-quality tilt-shift lens. I'm also not behind the camera right now to make sure that I'm exactly perfectly in focus. Um, and there's a lot of finesse with a tilt-shift lens. But they're fun. Make kind of Half the image is all sort of blurry. There's sort of a clear-ish area here with a high-quality lens. This could be clear as razor sharp and then it'd be all blurry. So it's fun. I thought it'd be fun to do the video with this today. But we're not talking about tilt shift lenses today. We're talking about being ready to bug out. Uh, now I think a lot of people have uh, a bug out plan. Uh, a lot of people have bug out bags, uh, you know, throw into their vehicle. I know I'm, I'm no exception to that rule. Um, but uh, there's an Achilles heel to the, uh, the bug out uh, um, uh, sort of concept uh, that I wonder how much people have given a lot of consideration to. And that's fuel. Uh, I know if you're like most people, we, we're driving around, we get, we're busy during the week, and a lot of times we don't have time to stop and get gas all the time. I know a lot of times I'll find that I'm running kind of low on gas and I need to go and stop and get gas. My, my general policy is I like to let the gas tank go down to be about half full and then fill it back up. Half full, uh, a half full gas tank for me, I drive a, um, a Prius, a half full gas tank for me gets me about 250 miles. Um, half full net gas tanks for other people might get you more, might get you less than that. Um, but uh, I like to not let it get less than halfway full, and the reason for that is if there was an SHTF event, uh, you don't know that gas stations are going to be available to you. Uh, the grid could be down. They can't. They don't have electricity to run their gas pumps. It could be as simple as a financial, uh, like the financial systems go down. The credit cards don't work. Now you should always have cash on hand, but if you don't, and you're, rel you're uh, reliant upon an electronic payment, uh, if something as simple as just the credit card systems going down uh, might create a large problem for you where you can't get gasoline. Um, so I think the, the best thing you can do is always try to keep your, your gas tank at least halfway full all the time. So you're, you're ready to do anything. And also it's just it's not a pain. You don't run into that pain in the ass where you have to go to get gas because it's so low. Um, if uh, barring that and maybe even on top of that, uh, you can store gas in those gas canisters, uh, you know, the big red, red ones. Uh, well, red ones for, for gasoline. Um, uh, that's a, not a bad plan, and you can store gasoline. I've personally done it for up to a year or so, um, and it still works just fine as long as you keep it in, in the proper container and everything. Now, uh, modern gasoline uh, has ethanol added into it, and over time that will separate out, and um, you're going to need to siphon off, uh, well, get the gasoline out of there and, uh, and uh, not be putting the ethanol into your gas tank, because uh, from what I understand, it doesn't really play nice if they've separated and then you put them into the, uh, the gas tank. Um, I, maybe you can shake it back up together. I've never tried that. Uh, my inclination would be that that would not work. Um, again, I haven't, I haven't actually tried that on my vehicle. Um, I'm not planning on trying that on my vehicle. Uh, but I know that if you just siphon the gasoline out and leave the ethanol, then, um, then you're, you're good to go with that. Um, what, what is your policy on that? Do you try to prevent your gas tank from getting too low in the event that something might happen? If the grid goes down, they can't pump gasoline, you might be stuck and unable to bug out. You, have, you may have a great lo retreat location, you may have all the bug out bags in the world, but if you can't move your vehicle, uh, a lot of those plans are going to have to change at the last minute. And uh, last minute changes uh, without a plan uh, connected with them are oftentimes a little bit rough. And as preppers, that's what we're trying to avoid. Is uh, uh, get rid of those rough bumps in the road as much as we can. So let me know your thoughts on this. Is this something that you currently do? Is it, do you think this is a good idea? Is this a blind spot that you had had? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.